Let's look at some extra bit of information for overview of simple finance and central finance presentations. So what happens to existing custom programs and interfaces? So in the legacy system, which is our ERP-6, there might have been some custom programs developed and there will be some interfaces flowing from non-SAP systems or even SAP systems to our main ERP system. Can we still use this in simple finance? Yes, we can still use those custom programs. How does it facilitate? Well, for example, if you have a custom program which points to the FAGL Flex T, the total stables, or any other type of total stable, which might not, will not be there in simple finance, there is something called a compatibility view created. During simple finance installation, compatibility views are created for those tables which have been removed or deleted. So, for example, if you have a program which is pointing to an old table, this compatibility view will ensure that it now points to the new tables. So, that's how they, you can still use the old programs and interfaces in Simple Finance. So, any read access which means just like reading a table or reading some reports or just type of read access. For example, this is more of an IT terminology. You can think of it as like a display access. Now, any read access for any type of custom programs which point to old tables will now point to the universal journal entry table, which is the ACDOCA table. And as I mentioned before, it will facilitate through the compatibility view. But programs with write access, which means it's like a changing the table or those kind of not only display, but anything more than display, like changing or even actually creating some kind of information in the table. If it's point to the old tables, then it will not work. Because the compatibility view, just like the word view, it is only like able to view the table. You cannot make any changes to the old tables which have been pointing to old tables. So if you have any programs which is going to write any new information to the old tables, then it will not work. So what you need to do is you need to remove the write access programs and manually change those programs or you should you need to edit those programs to point to the new universal journal entry table, which is also the ACDOCA table. So remember, Existing programs can still work. However, only read access programs will work. If it's write access, then you need to change the program to point to the new table. Now, it's very important to know which other tables have been removed. I've shown this earlier in the presentation. The index tables and aggregate tables which have been removed and will be replaced by the ACDOCA table but you need to know which other tables have been removed in simple finance and you need to know these table names for example COSS is for cost totals for internal postings COSP for external postings and so on especially if you're planning to sit for the simple finance certification you need to know these table names because in the certification exam they will not simply give the description of the table they might actually give the ID of the table so you must know what these tables mean and it's not too difficult to remember just go through this many times I'm sure you'll be able to master the table names and some other tables of course the FAGL Flex A, COEP, ANEP, ANEA the asset related tables also so just again to summarize the index tables, the total tables and some other tables have, moved, have been removed from Simple Finance. Now they all point to the Universal Journal Entry Table or the ACTOCA table. So you need to know the table names of these other tables as well. Another important content in terms of the Simple Finance certification is the Prima Nota. Now these are all Latin words but think of it in English as primary note is a bit more easier for you to comprehend if you think of it as prima as prime or primary and nota as note so prima nota is the source document which triggers the creation of journal entries you must remember this statement very clearly because everything else coming after the next few slides you can relate to this source document so think of the primary as a prime primary source and note think of it as a document in that way you can somehow relate prima nota into a source document now this source document which triggers the creation of journal entries is the prima nota let's look at this in more detail this is the initial set of information being passed to the system before any validation substitution derivation 
enhancement or any type of rules applied. So this is the initial set of information coming to the system. So without any rules being applied, the initial set of information coming to the system. For example, invoices, expense reports, payroll documents, which type of these kind of external documents which are coming to the system. It can be vendor invoice or customer invoice, any type of different expense reports coming from different exper expense or uh, travel or expense reporting systems and your HR payroll documents which are coming into SAP. So these are all called Prima Nota. So let's look at the different type of Prima Nota postings. First, let's look at the classic FI postings. As I mentioned in the earlier slide, for example, if you have travel or expense reports coming in, you usually post them using the FB50 or FB01 transactions. These are like general journal entry ledger entries. And if you have like customer invoices or vendor invoices, you can use the FB70 or FB60 transactions. So these are all classic FI postings or all Prima Nota. And these Prima Nota are stored in the BSEG table, which is your old line item table. However, the journal entries are posted in the new ACTOCA table, which is your universal journal entry table. So the entries are still stored in BSEG, but the journal entries are actually written in ACTOCA table. So this will be your primary source, your ACTOCA table. So once again, the Prima Notas are still stored in the BSEG table, but the journal entries are written in the ACTOCA table. Let's look at another type of Prima Nota, manual CO postings. For example, manually reposting costs or revenues using those KB transactions. Manual activity allocation, manual allocations. Anything you do manually in CO, these are also called Prima Nota postings. Now these are still stored in the COEP tables. That's our old CO tables, the CO line term tables. However, the journal entries are posted in the ACTOCA table, just like the same thing for the classic FI postings. Remember, all the entries will always be posted to the ACTOCA tables. Next, let's look at the material ledger postings. For example, material price changes or some material postings with debits or credit changes. These are still stored in the material ledger tables, which are your MLHT and MLIT and so on. However, these are only stored over here, but the journal entries are actually posted in the ACTOCA table. Because remember, the ACTOCA table has all the FI postings, the CO postings, material ledger postings, and asset accounting postings, and including the COPA account-based profitability analysis postings as well. So everything is entered in the ACTOCA table. How about allocation postings? For example, you run your assessment cycles or settlement cycles or settlement rules. These are not Prima Nota documents. Remember, primary document or source document, these are not primary postings. These are all like secondary postings. So it has its own history management for allocation postings. Hence, these are not Prima Nota documents. They are simply directly written to the ACTOCA table. So you should remember which are the three type of postings which are Prima Nota, Classic FI postings, Manual CO postings and Material Ledger postings. And you must remember that allocation postings are not Prima Nota documents. This is very important in terms of the simple finance certification exam because you might encounter a few questions regarding this Prima Nota and how they are written to the ACTOCA tables. Let's look at the key components for central finance installation. As you know, you need SAP HANA, SAP HANA database. You need that to run all the SAP Simple Finance and Central Finance suits. You need the SAP Business suit. You need SAP Simple Finance. These three are very obvious. The important another installation you need is a SAP Landscape Transformation Replication Server. You can see the keyword is replication because what happens in Central Finance from external systems, you go and post to the your SAP Central Finance system. So what this replication server does is it provides real-time data for tables. So this is how from the ACTOCA table you can get the information out. So these four important installations are required for central finance. Once again, SAP HANA, SAP Landscape Transformation Replication Server, SAP Business Suite, SAP Simple Finance. These are the four important installations required. 
Now, why do you need these things? The other is SAP HANA Live, Fiori Apps, SAP BI Tools. These are mostly for reporting purposes. So it's not compulsory. However, it's good to have this so you can get good reporting options. And of course, you can install the other additional suits, which are the SAP Cache Management, SAP IBPF. These are all separate licensing. And these are all optional installations if you want to include in your central finance components.